on a daily basis, individuals leave their homes, they go up, up about their business, they come back home, and they have no idea of the battle that they're facing every day. For you see, every day you're facing an adversary, and there are many things that he wants you to lose in this life. He attacks your marriage. He attacks relationships with family members who you love so much, yet he has destroyed those relationships, which include children, which include mothers, which include fathers, neighbors, friends. And we go up about our business every day. Not truly understanding who we're facing, not truly understanding the adversary, the devil. And as you're hearing this video, a large majority of you, like myself, is undergoing a lot of spiritual attacks from the devil on a daily basis. And there is one thing that he wants you to lose the most, but you don't realize it, and that is hope. Satan does not want you to have hope. He does not want you to have faith. And he wants you to give up. In Matthew 9, 37, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. What happened to those laborers? Why do we have such few laborers? For many of them, they lost hope. Oftentimes, as a preacher, as a brother in the Lord who's preaching the gospel, I see so many. They will write in, I want to start doing preachings. I want to start doing videos. I want to start doing street preaching. And you give them tips. Okay, start with this, start with that. Never preach a word that you're not living. It's better to stay quiet than to preach a word that you're not living. It's a dangerous thing. And then it always boils down to the question, what is the biggest tip that you have? And I usually share with them, never lose hope. Quite often, you want to see a quick result. You want to see a very fast result to what you're doing. You want to see a very fast turnaround to God saving a person that you love. Oh God, but it's been years, it's been two years, it's been three years. What's going on, God? What's happening? What's happening is, is that you're about to lose hope. The devil's very good at making you lose hope and stop believing that the miraculous is going to happen. I see so many, as I mentioned, they begin and they'll start making videos for a month. And they'll write in and say, Tally, I only have 10 views. Tally, I only have 15 views. Tally, what's the point? The point is, is that your hope in making any video is that at least one person is saved. And if 10 people watched it, then in Jesus' name, those were 10 seeds that were planted and that you may not see the result in your lifetime possibly, and that you may not see the result in five, 10 years possibly. Yet you were obedient. That's what hope is. You're obedient to God and you believe in him so much that you know that he's going to do what he said he's going to do if you do what you are supposed to do. You believe in the impossible. But we don't like to wait. And Satan uses that against us. And when you're married to a person who is not a believer in Jesus Christ, or you're married to a person who is a backslider. Oh, how he uses it then, doesn't he? And he'll tell you that 
The grass is greener on the other side. Do you see how she's treating you? Do you see how he's treating you? You deserve better. He wants you to lose hope. Your child, they backslide. They go out into the world. Some of them actually stop talking to you for a long time. That beautiful child that once would run to your lap and jump on you has now become distant. And you wonder, the devil starts putting thoughts in your mind, you wonder, was this life worth it? But I raised them in the Lord. But I taught them the truth of the scriptures. What's going on here? Don't lose hope. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Believe that there's a God that has not left you comfortless. John 14, 18, believe. Believe that there's a God who said in John 14, 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Believe. Believe as Revelation 21 4 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away believe this Bible verse is special for those who have gone through infirmities until you've gone through those types of seasons you don't know what it feels like it is horrible this past year i went through two major surgeries and the surgery part was the easy part because you're under anesthesia you don't even know what's happening it's the process of having to go through the surgery and then the recovery after the surgery as well. And I remember when I was going to go for my last surgery, the heart one. I had a lot of tears in my eyes. My family didn't see it. It was back there waiting to go to the actual heart surgery procedure thing. It was intense because as you're having hope, believing in Christ and you're having hope, the devil starts throwing th stuff in your mind, man. And there's only one way for you to counter that stuff, and, and that is by fasting, that is by praying, and that is by staying in God's word. We're on this earth but a temporary moment, but a temporary second. And a lot of you are suffering beyond belief. As I mentioned, especially in these holiday seasons, a lot of people suffer. They feel lonely. Your hope for a woman hasn't come to fruition, you feel lonely. Your hope for a man has not come to fruition, so you feel lonely. It's, it's normal. It's common. I get it. Your kids are not the same during the holidays. You get depressed. You get lonely. There are many who crave a, a local assembly where they can serve the Lord and a biblical church. But it's been so hard to find and, and you start losing a little hope sometimes. Even on YouTube, there are not many biblical channels left. There are some. It's very easy to lose hope. I go back to when a lot of people write and they say, I'm, I want to start doing videos and a month passes, two month passes, and they quit. And they'll say, it's easy for you to say you have 77 thousand subscribers. But you know I've been doing this since 2007, 2008, right? It wasn't always like this. In fact, there are people who make channels a year or two years ago that have more subscribers than me. See, the thing is this. You have to be in this for the long haul. Whether you're preaching to one person on a street corner or thousands of people in a local assembly, you don't know the impact you're not going to see the impact of what God is using you to do right there and then. 
you may see it. I, I've seen deliverances. I've seen casting out of devils. I've seen people healed instantly. I've seen it. But I've also seen moments where the person has taken five, six, seven, eight years for them to turn to God and be saved. Simply be obedient to God and don't give up in whatever God, calling God has given you. Your hope should rely on God because he's God. Not rely on God because something comes to happen or doesn't happen. That's not true faith. We should believe in God because he's God, period. Because he saved us, period. Anything else is just an added bonus. Look at this man in this video here. Every day, for many years, he planted trees in an area that was barren. In an area that had absolutely nothing. 37 years later, it's a forest. Itu apuna itu seventy nine atau starting question tar agote itu itu postu. Tapi itu lebih leh tiap pota pot kui bo pera bivos satu asa ya jitu guti hongo tu ya apa lebu pay. Itu je saya pas pay hektar je asa beli kui su. Itu gos gos sonya. Iti a kekon habit atau dua orang yang hua kane. Bunda hota hati tate tini marin thake. Aru kedore gor thake. Jikirin thake me gosok ke rumah. Ebu filap kau buat jawat distrik tu jadi filap kau paru. Tapi kunwa katibola mukai katiru ebu katilah kila mas. Puti bat mukai hulu mau mana buja aja. Gosai tu ghor bangi bol nazar. Now as you just saw this man, who every day. He worked really hard. He busted his tail. He did all he could. Do you not think there were days that he didn't feel like going out there and planting seeds? There are days. Today as I'm making this video, I'm making it with a crooked neck. <laughs> I went, I took a little nap. I said, I'm gonna take a nap before I, 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 I start preaching. And I wake up, I got a runny nose, my neck is hurting. And forget about it. I'm talking to you with my neck twisted right now. It's not going to be easy. Okay. As a brother in Christ, I I've worked multiple jobs. I've put in 60, 70 hours a week in my full-time job. And then 20, 30 hours a week in ministry work. And then father, then husband. None of this stuff is easy. Take that out of your mind when it comes to doing God's work. No one said it would be easy. But brother and sister, don't quit after a month or two. Don't quit after a year or two. You're in this for the long haul. You're gonna see the fruits. You're gonna see them eventually. You're gonna see them in your children. You're gonna see it. They're rebellious right now. They're acting ignorant right now. You've planted some seeds in there. And just because you haven't seen that seed come out of the ground, you give up? No, before a seed comes out of the ground, it grows in the ground first. It has to grow roots and you don't see those roots. I remember when my dad used to take me to grow beans and gandules and papas and all that stuff. And I'd be like, but dad, I don't see nothing, man. You know, because we had to go out there. We had to pick the bad weeds out so that it wouldn't disturb the good plant from growing. And we would water it and rake it and leave it really nice. My dad was very good at this. And one day he actually put his hand to the ground and pulled one and said, look, it's there. And there were roots. You just don't see it. God is working in your wife. God is working in your husband. God is working in your children. God is working at your job. God is working in your life. Just because you don't see it, that doesn't mean he's not working on your side. He's there, present, next to you, fighting with you. And he has something amazing for you, if you would just believe and have patience. This man, after 37 years, found the forest. Imagine after we do 37 years of ministry. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ, I cannot wait to see how many people are saved. For his glory, because it is God who's doing it. Abraham and Sarah, 
waited 25 years to hold baby Isaac in their hands. Isaac and Rebekah waited 20 years to hold their twin babies Jacob and Esau. Joseph waited 30 years to become a ruler in Egypt. Moses waited 40 years in Midian before returning to Egypt to lead the Israelites. There's so many people that want to rush into ministry without getting developed and getting that experience that God gives you in life. The woman with the issue of blood waited 12 years before Jesus healed her. The examples of hope being tested are throughout the scriptures. But the example of God never failing man is throughout scripture. God is never late. He's always on time. It may not be your time, but he's working. Do not lose hope. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share the word with brothers and sisters in the Lord all around the world. Beautiful brothers and sisters in the Lord who are going through so much, Father. Each one of us has our battles and you know what they are. Help us with them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You said that if we have faith, faith the size of a mustard seed, Father, allow us to have that type of faith, Lord. That just because we don't see the miracle happen, just because we don't see the expectations that we falsely create, by the way, that doesn't mean that you're not working. You are at work. You're a miraculous worker and you are always on time. May you open our eyes and ears, Lord. May you prune us, Lord, to continue to walk in your statutes, to continue to walk in your commandments, to continue to walk in your way regardless of the obstacle. Regardless of the size of our ministry, whether it's to preach to a street corner or it's to preach to thousands of people, may we always walk in obedience, understanding that you have a purpose for all of us. And that the purpose that you have for us is a beautiful one, regardless of the size, because to you, it doesn't work that way. In the name of Jesus, Lord, touch brothers and sisters that are watching this right now that are called to preach the word men who were called to preach the gospel, men who were called to lead, but have slowly and surely faded. In the name of Jesus, Lord, encourage these people, Lord, to get up in the name of Jesus, to get up in the name of Jesus and continue this walk and continue the walk. You may not see it now, but God is going to use you in the name of Jesus. We love you, Heavenly Father. We repent of all of our sins and we thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Get up and get going, brother. Get up and get going, sister. Regardless of who says what they say, next week we'll talk about the naysayers and the busybodies. There are times that I've edited, there are times that I've edited a video for 30, 30 hours and I upload the video and the first thing you hear from a brother and sister in the Lord is, if you're going to make a video with bad grammar, you shouldn't make any. That's happened to me before. And your first reaction is to get defensive and be like, oh, how dare he? How dare she? Right? But you have to understand this. There is a person who has so many talents and gifts, yet is doing nothing. Because you go to that person's channel, and they haven't made one video in their entire life. Yet you see a person who has bad grammar, yet is willing to put in the time for Jesus Christ. I know of, of, of an evangelist. He has the reading ability of a third grader. Mathematics ability of probably a first, second grader. Yet God uses him to go to South America, Dominican Republic, and other places. And when people talk to him, his speech isn't good. He sounds as if you would say, this guy's a little bit you know, slow, how people would say. But when he grabs that microphone and he starts preaching, and preaching isn't eloquent in, in speech, but it's filled with power because he has hope that the one who sent them is going to back him up. Regardless of what your difficulties are, regardless of your, your, your flaws in terms of being able to do this, get started in Jesus Christ. The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Don't be that laborer. Don't be that laborer. Have you ever worked at a place where you had a co-worker that wasn't doing their part and you got frustrated? Don't be that laborer. Don't be that co-worker who's stalling and causing everybody to work harder because of you. No, get up in this, man. Let's do this. I love you very much. You know that, right?
the very few of you who watched the entire video, thank you so much. And even if you only watched a few minutes and you came back, thank you very much. Keep me and my family in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. I love you so much. God bless you. Keep on seeking Jesus Christ. Amen. And consider sharing this video with your friends and families uh, on Facebook or whichever other method. Uh, thank you. God bless.